Welcome to the Silverthorne Signal. I'm Kim Jardim with the town of Silverthorne, and I'm here today with Laura Kennedy, our finance director, to speak about short-term rental regulations. Welcome, Laura. Thanks, Kim. So we're going to get started with some questions about uh, short-term regulations, which has been a uh, hot topic in Summit County uh, over the last, I'd say, handful of months, if not a little bit longer. And so um, we're gonna start off with talking about what the catalyst was for Silverthorne to decide to implement short-term regulations. Sure. So, uh, Kim, we received a number of uh, complaints and concerns from individual citizens, which really brought this issue to the fore. And um, we did a number of um, outreach, a, a number of different ways to outreach to the community to see if these individual complaints and concerns were shared by the rest of the community. And so we did a community open house about short-term rentals where we got feedback from the community on whether they thought uh, regulations regarding short-term rentals were uh, required or if that's something that they were interested in. We got a lot of feedback there and then we did a community survey to continue that outreach for people that couldn't attend the open house and overwhelmingly we found that the community was in support of putting some regulations into place and the, the two reasons for this really are um, just making sure that the hosts have um, responsibilities that they need to fulfill mm -hmm. and then also that there are consequences if they don't fulfill those responsibilities. Also, just um, having a little bit more concern around uh, safety. Some of the mm -hmm. complaints that we received were definitely uh, in response to some safety concerns. Um, also, some um, concerns and complaints about um, noisy parties, parking, some things that are already addressed by our um, town code but sure. also some things where there weren't really any consequences for the owners of the properties, mm. whereas really it was um, the guests that were causing the, the problems for their neighbors. So once we got the um, feedback from the community, we then went through um, several iterations of mm. the ordinance to get make sure that we covered all our bases, and uh, we passed that ordinance back in October. Great. So you were really hearing from the citizens of Silverthorne that this was important to them, that there be some sort of controls over short-term rentals. Exactly, exactly. So um, Airbnb, VRBO, a number of the marketing platforms have really just grown exponentially. And Silverthorne's location and being a tourist destination with all the ski areas and all the wonderful summer activities that we have has made us a destination. And so um, we also need to level the playing field. You know, we have a number of hotels in the area that have you know, a 24 hour front desk. They collect and pay their sales and lodging taxes to the town. Um, they really have been good corporate citizens. And some people who begin short term renting just aren't aware of the requirements mm -hmm. that they need to be collecting and paying sales and lodging taxes and sure. that they need to make sure that their guests comply with good neighbor um, practices you know, not parking in the street, you know, you're not allowed to feed the bears, you know, don't try to pet a moose, just things that you might not be aware of if you're coming out here from another area. We do have different types of wildlife and um, opportunities here for people to, to see them, but you're not really supposed to interact with the wildlife. So right. um, just certain things that are really um, special about our community and we want to keep it that way. Absolutely. Great. So let's talk about uh, if you own a property in wilderness, uh, is that, I, I think a lot of folks are a bit confused about what are, is within the town limits of Silverthorne and what is not. So is wilderness a part of Silverthorne? Wilderness is not in the town limits of Silverthorne. Okay. So the Silverthorne town limits extend from uh, approximately Lowe's in the south up to Mar South Maryland Creek Ranch in the north. But if anyone is not sure of where they reside or where their property is located, the Summit County Assessor's Office has, uh, you can put in the address and um, the first screen that pops up under the um, location, what is it, the actual part of the website, um, has the jurisdiction within which yes. that property is located. I believe and that way you can see if you're in Summit County, Silverthorne, Breck, Frisco, Dylan, uh, wherever Great. your property is located, will be listed under the jurisdiction. 
Excellent. So some areas that I think of immediately that are not in Silverthorn that people might be a little bit confused about are Ptarmigan, mm -hmm. Mountain. Uh, Mesa Cortina. Mesa Cortina, the South 40. Um, is Hamilton Creek a part of Silverthorn? Uh, I, don't, I would have to look on the county assessor's office. I'm not, okay. I don't think it is. Right. I'm not absolutely sure on that one either. So um, anyway, there um, really it's just Silverthorn town limits that Silverthorn is overseeing. And um, that's actually um, quite a bit smaller than maybe some people think. And so um, when we talk about uh, other towns in the county and the county itself, have they taken action as well? I believe Breckenridge has um, a short-term rental regulation program in place. It's my understanding that the county recently adopted some regulations at the end of December of 2018. Uh, are there any other towns that you're aware of that are also um, within the county that are uh, involved in short-term rental regulations? Absolutely. Actually, all of the uh, municipalities have been working with the county so that we are, not all of our regulations are exactly the same, but we've been bouncing ideas off of each other. And we've actually all contracted with one organization to help us with compliance. That company is called STR Helper. and. Um, all of um, Breckenridge, Silverthorne, Frisco, Dillon, and the county have adopted mm -hmm. regulations around short-term rentals. And there are different um, licensing fees or licensing types. I believe the, um, the county is not, does not issue licenses per se, but they are requiring that all short-term rentals be um, registered and meet the requirements of the county. And so there, um, licensing application just went online um, in the past week or so and so people can find that on the Summit County website but okay. all of the towns um, that I mentioned as well as the county have enacted short-term rental regulations. Great. So what sort of services do does STR Helper provide for our town of Silverthorne? So STR Helper is um, a company that specializes in helping um, munis or not municipalities, but um, governments um, identify short-term rentals within their jurisdiction. And then also we provide them with our licensing information. And part of our licensing requirement is for a property owner to identify a registered agent who would be the person who's available 24 seven to respond to right. any complaints. And so they also provide us with a 24 seven uh, complaint call line so a live person answers um, if you're calling to complain you do need to have the um, location address that's how they'll um, look it up in their system to see if it is a licensed short-term rental and if it is there should be a registered agent on file at which point they would contact the registered agent to respond to the complaint wow so that's uh, i'm sure citizens are feeling really comfortable about having a system like that in place because I think uh, some folks worry about having a short-term rental right next to their home, but um, many times it's not an issue, but if it is, you have a place to go, um, a person to help and resolve the issue, which is great. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's see, uh, are there any plans to regulate long-term rentals? No, um, long-term rentals are not something that we're looking to license and regulate. The use of a home as a long-term rental is really just as a residence. So short-term rentals are any rentals of less than 30 days. Um, anything longer than that would qualify as a long-term rental. And really the only benefit to um, identifying and licensing long-term rentals would be just to maybe um, see if long-term rentals are starting to affect, or excuse me, the prevalence of short-term rentals is starting to affect the availability of long-term rentals. And that's really just informational, but the town code currently addresses a lot of the issues that might be experienced if you had a neighbor that was long-term renting their property. So parking, you know, pets not under control or off-leash, um, noise, lights, we do have ordinances in place uh, to address that already. So it's just like any neighbor. If you have an issue with your neighbor, of course you wanna work them, that out with them directly um, if possible, but if not, then you can always call um, the police and they're there to assist you with 
issues where a person is uh, violating the town code. Right. Okay, great. So that that's always been in place and remains that way, so nothing will change there. Uh, so we've talked already about some of the main issues that come up with short-term rentals, uh, noise, uh, let's see, uh, trash, uh, parking issues. Are, are there any others that you've heard about other than the ones that we've already mentioned here today? Some of the um uh, requirements of the short-term rental licensing are also around the safety of the guest. So things like fire extinguishers, where the, where's the location of the fire extinguisher? Is there a fire extinguisher available, you know, in case there is a fire? Um, the um, possibility, you know, with the fire danger that we experience in the summertime, uh, we have prohibited the um, outdoor fire, the movable outdoor fire pits, and um, also made um, the owners um, agreed to have smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors in place. So um, certain things surrounding safety for the, the guests themselves has been addressed in the short-term rental ordinance as well as um, complaints and then consequences if, sure. if there are um, complaints that go unresolved or if a um, owner does not get licensed and comply with the regulations. Great. So. I have a property that I'd like to short-term rent in Summit County, or actually in Silverthorne specifically. What are the steps that I take to do that uh, and comply with all of the new regulations that are in place? So the um, short-term rental licensing application is on our website. And so for this first year that this regulation is in place, we've made it um, uh, that necessary for you to turn in a paper application. And the reason for that is that we require um, an affidavit to be notarized by, um, with the owner's signature so that we can see that the person has, has read through and agreed to all the requirements of the licensing. And those are some of the things I already mentioned for um, safety and the registered agent. So the license application itself is the, um, you know, identifies the owner and the property location. Um, and then there's the self-compliance affidavit that describes some of the requirements around safety and good neighbor um, relations. Um, if it's a duplex, the owner is required to send a letter to the um, owner of the, uh, the adjacent duplex to let them know that that's their intention to short-term rent their property. Um, and then there's the short-term rental responsible agent form, which identifies who will be called in the case of a complaint. And then there's the good neighbor guidelines, and those are the four parts of the application. Those need to be completed and then submitted along with the application fee, which is dependent on the number of bedrooms that are being rented. So um, the um, application process this first time through is, like I said, on paper. But in the future for renewals, we do plan to have an online renewal uh, portal up and available. So uh, licenses that are being issued this first time around will be up for renewal um, in November. Okay. And so you're renewing for each calendar year, is that correct? Yep. Okay. Excellent. So are there any properties that are restricted with short-term rentals, just certain neighborhoods, or, or is there any type of situation where someone might not be able to short-term rent their property? Absolutely. The town code um, governs um, certain aspects of short-term rentals, but the homeowners association where a person's property is located has their own covenants. And so a number of, short, a number of um, homeowners associations have prohibited short-term rentals. And if that's the case, then the owner needs to, uh, I mean, it should abide by those. They shouldn't be short-term renting their property. Um, also deed restricted properties, for example, the Smith Ranch uh, workforce housing that's being built right now, um, short-term rentals are prohibited. Wow, okay, so that's, that's good to know. Um, uh, you, you need to follow the regulations within your personal, your HOA, and understand if that's an option for you or not. It may, it may certainly not, and that's up to the homeowner to do that homework and understand if that's an option for them. Absolutely, the so, town does not enforce homeowners association uh, rules and covenants. That's up to the homeowners association to put the teeth behind that. Great. And 
you talked about responsible agents before and who who can be a responsible agent does it have to be someone that's employed by a business that manages short-term rentals can it be um, a personal friend or you know a local citizen who who can be a responsible agent a responsible agent can be the owner themselves they can um uh, assign that responsibility to their property management company if they so choose and then there are some companies that offer this service um, to second homeowners who may not want to respond to a call at 2 a.m. about their um, their guests so um, really it can be anyone that the homeowner chooses as long as the responsible agent is also aware and agrees to those responsibilities and so if it is not the owner then that um, responsible agent signature and agreement is also required on the application. Great. They just have to be available 24-7 to respond to a complaint. Excellent. So let's talk about taxes for a minute. What, uh, what is the percentage of taxes that are collected and how does that break out? You know, uh, what portion of the taxes is going to the town and to other entities? Sure, so the tax rate for lodging in the town of Silverthorne is 10.375. And the way that breaks down is that 4% of that goes to the town of Silverthorne. So four of the 10.375 is the town of Silverthorne's. 2% of that is sales tax, and 2% of that is lodging tax. The remainder of that 10.375, so 6.375, gets paid to the state and then the state takes that and breaks it down into the different taxing entities. The state of Colorado's tax rate is 2.9%, Summit County's tax rate is 2%, and then we have the Summit County Transit Tax that funds the Summit Stage at 0.75, and then the Summit Combined Housing Authority's tax rate is 0.725, and that's really what's been um, enabling the county and the various jurisdictions to build the workforce housing such as the Smith Ranch uh, neighborhood. So really all of that gets remitted to the state of Colorado and then the town has its own sales and lodging tax return where that tax gets paid directly to the town. Great, so I've heard about Airbnb BCA. Can you tell us what that is? So Airbnb being one of the major platforms for short-term rentals has reached out to various jurisdictions to uh, try to bring their um, hosts into compliance. A lot of people have never run a business before and they don't understand what their responsibilities are as far as collecting and uh, paying taxes on those uh, revenues. And so Airbnb is trying to make it easier for their um, hosts. So Airbnb has agreed to include the tax collection in their website and then to pay those taxes on behalf of their hosts to the various jurisdictions. Uh, so the town has entered into the VCA, which stands for Voluntary Compliance Agreement, with Airbnb so that we um, receive those taxes from people that use Airbnb as their platform. Great. So uh, there's two methods that where a person can lodge a complaint about a suspected short-term rental. Uh, the first piece of information that the person needs to have at their fingertips is the address of the property uh, about which they want to complain. Um, and so then once you have that information, you can either uh, go to the town's website, website and uh, look for the STR complaint form. You can, it's at the top of the web page, or you can do a search, um, and then you put in the address and the information about the complaint. The second method is to call the STR helper hotline, and that number is 970-368-2044. Um, and they will take that information from you. They will locate the name and number of the registered agent and call that person for you to respond to the complaint. Now, if it is not a licensed short-term rental, you can also call the complaint line and they will um, then forward the complaint to non-emergency dispatch for response. Great. Sounds like a great system in place. Uh, and so I know the program is in its infancy. What have you seen so far through the complaint hotline, if anything? So um, complaints that we've received have primarily been about properties that are not within the town limits. So um, that's a good thing. I mean, Silverthorne really has one of the um, highest 
full-time year-round populations in the county, and so there aren't as many uh, short-term rentals in Silverthorne as, as there may be in other areas. Um, but of the complaints that we have received, um, when the police or um, registered agent has responded, um, typically the issue has already been resolved by the time they get there. That's Great. been our experience. Excellent. So can you think of anything else regarding short-term rentals that we haven't talked about today that you think might be important for people to know? Or do you feel like we've really covered it all? Um, I think that overall that the, um, the, the process has been a success. I mean, really, that's the outcome of this is that uh, people were feeling really frustrated that they didn't have any way to um, to get around some of the, the concerns that they have. And now that the regulations are in place, we've seen a very high compliance rate. Um, you know, uh, we've educated homeowners about their responsibilities, which has been mm -hmm. super um, effective. And um, it's really it's really been a successful process overall. You know, I, I really think the town has done a good job at um, getting community feedback, responding to a concern, and then just getting people to comply with taking responsibility for the um, consequences of on other people of their um, their efforts in utilizing their second home or you know extra bedrooms in their home to make some extra money. So overall, it's been it's been really good at um, leveling the playing field for um, biz existing businesses. Uh, addressing the concerns of affected neighbors and then getting the homeowners and guests to uh, behave responsibly. Great. Thank you for joining us today to talk about short-term rentals with Laura Kennedy, our finance director with the town of Silverthorne. I'm Kim Jardim with the town of Silverthorne. We appreciate your time. If you have any other questions or concerns about short-term rental regulations, you can visit our website at www.silverthorne.org or phone us at 262-7300. Thank you and have a great day.